watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Hello, I'm Reverend Sam. Good morning. I believe this is a great day for somebody watching me right now. I believe so because God put a special message in my heart for you. You know, every time I come on air, I always let you see what to pray for and what to do. Now, today, I want us to focus more on prayer and doing. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. And he said to everyone that asks, they receive, and to those who seek, they find. You know, what separates the winners from losers is the second part. It's easy to pray. Is the seeking that is the major thing because most people just don't want to risk getting out of their comfort zone. And the truth is, if a woman wants to keep her shape, she will never get married. If she gets married, she will, she will soon be divorced because her husband and her husband's family will be looking for children. And when a woman begins to have children, her body shape will change. If you think I'm lying, go and ask your wife. Now, that means, you know, Solomon also said, um, um, without oxen, your, your barn will be, will, be, will be clean. He said, but with the multitude of oxen comes a lot of harvest. In other words, if you want progress in life, you've got to get your hand and your feet dipped in the mud. I don't know why I'm saying this because this is not part of my introduction, but I believe God always speaks through me to bless someone who is hungry at it and is looking forward to testimony. Don't get discouraged. All of us face challenges. The truth is, without challenges, life will not be filled with fun. Why? Because when God created life, you know, the Bible said that the evening and the morning one day. Why does God have to mix night and day to make it one day? And then David said, weeping may endure for the night, but joy come in the morning. That means the weeping and the joy mix a, a, a whole day. I hope I'm talking to someone that is getting discouraged. Because the truth is, before you become a master, you must be an apprentice. Before you succeed, you have to try. Before you get it, you have to reach out. Today, I want to speak to us and lead us in what I call divine intervention prayers. It's a special prayer that God placed in my heart. Um, we, 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 we used it in our last week, Friday, um, Prayer and Prophetic Our Life on our Facebook page. And on Sunday also, I felt specially led to share it as a message. But the Holy Spirit said to me to share with you. So, first scripture we're going to use to pray. I'll just make a few explanations and then we're going to do some praying. Is First Chronicles chapter 4 from verse 9 to verse 10. And I'm going to advise you, get your Bible. Either on your iPad, on your phone. Maybe you are still the traditional person that has the paper bag. That's okay. Whatever version you have, what is important is what is written. First Chronicles chapter 4, from verse 9 to verse 10. The Bible was talking about a particular man. In fact, when you read the book of Chronicles, the book of Chronicles is actually the record of people's life. So when we have, you know, what bother me is that before this guy, you will hear that somebody... Uh, give back to somebody and then that person will die another person give back to somebody and then the person will die and I said so the only reason, the only thing that is in record for many of them is that they came to this world and they die nothing else ah may that not be my portion in the name of Jesus you know why God never sent you to this planet heart for no reason there is a vision assigned to your destiny it might be to one person it might be to 10 people. It might be to a nation. It might be to a family. But everybody has an assignment given to them from God. That does not mean you have to be a pastor. No. You just have a God. Wow. Thank you, Lord. You just have a God-given assignment in your life. And the secret of success is what, is what are you passionate about? What is that thing that you always love to achieve? That may be a pointer to the reason why God created you. You know the guy that, that um, established Kentucky Fried Chicken? After he has done everything he knew to do, and he, he was no more than an average person, when he collected his gratuity, I was told he also bought some money um, because he loved to, he loved, um, 
making chicken and all that and then he began he, he started it and was giving it out for free and people love it and so he started putting price on it and today his legacy still lives on so my point is you are created for a purpose and that purpose no, must not be abused you must not allow that purpose to go with you to the grave because it is appointed unto a man to die once whether you like it or not you will die it's not cause is the is the law of nature the way god has created us after adam and eve saint man became subject to physical death but if you have given your life to christ and then you have the spirit of god in you so though even though you die and your physical body become decomposed your spirit will be alive because the life of god is inside your spirit man do you understand now and that's the only assurance you have that you're not going to go to hellfire so if you are watching me and you have not given your life to jesus believe me sincerely jesus is the way is the truth and the life nobody can get to the father except by him and nobody can be successful in this life without christ for christ is the living world so okay let me just let me also say this how do you discover your purpose in life Another way to discover it is to ask yourself, what is the injustice? What is the wrong wrongdoing that triggers your anger? Something you love to see changed. Believe me sincerely, that's a pointer to one of the things that God has ordained that you should carry out and be a part of solving in this life. And I'm praying for you today as I'm led by the Spirit right now that the anointing of God will come upon you to activate the grace the talent and the gift of God in your life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Efra ali na okasoto embrete kustadi gabohazata la fra nemonda otoluka basi asutuma ayende kelevu vasuria apra dekita da kalala bozaturi ani mazanda. As I pray right now, I see talent in somebody. It's like that talent just pop pop open. From this day, you begin to discover your joy will be in a particular direction. You begin to get exactly a particular direction. Whether it is popular or not, pursue it. That's your purpose in life. You know, it reminds me, um, after I gave my life to Christ, I don't know for whatever reason, while I was growing up and we used to do evangelism, I just love to stand in the middle of the street and share my gospel through megaphone. It's just in my heart that I prefer to speak once and many people hear me than one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And as, as time began to go, I discovered that I love to preach on television. In the 90s, I would stand before the mirror. That was before I ever got to any TV station. I would stand before the mirror and I'll be preaching. I'll be, I'll be talking to myself, preaching. So anytime I see that and I said, what's God's purpose for me? What gives me passion? You know what it is? I love to speak like this and speak to thousands of people. I will never forget, and I, I'm going to go as I'm led of the Holy Ghost. After I gave my life to Christ, while I was in school, having my A-levels, after we finished the A-levels, for whatever reason, I collected the address of everybody that was in our fellowship. It was a Christian fellowship. And when I got back to Lagos, you know what I would do? Though I was not working, but the small, small money I would be gathering together, I, I don't know how why it happened. I'll, I'll be writing letters. I will write letter. I give it to one brother, brother Shola. He will help me to mass produce it. He will copy it and bring it back to me. Then I will fold each of them, put them in an envelope, go to post post office, buy stamp with the little money I have. I put it and I send it. I kept on doing that for a long time. And then some of them will return back with me with 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 with, 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 with a post that a message in the letter I wrote was actually a word from God to them. All those things give me an indication that, okay, I believe God has given me a voice to speak to many people at the same time. I don't know why I'm saying all this I'm saying, but I'm actually a messenger. So, I believe that all I'm saying right now should give you an idea into what you should focus on. Everybody cannot do everything. And many people that are multi-talented and multi-gifted, we have the greater problem. You, you don't know where to focus. But I've come to discover there's always a, a dominant gifting. Others will come up, but there's a dominant gifting. When you focus on that one, other ones will come up. So this man, Jabez, when you look at first Luke chapter 4, I just want to emphasize that from verse 9 again because I believe that someone is watching me and your destiny is honorable, but there's a... There is a spare. There is an attachment from the kingdom of darkness due to what someone that is connected to your mom 
your mom's sister has done. I don't know what it is, but that's what I see right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I break that spell. Pasofina tadigalo satufini undubaline kete. The Bible says, Every tree that my father has not planted shall be rooted up. I command the angels of my ministry to go into your life right now and root up every shaft that has been planted around your wheat. Every thorn that does not make your glory to shine. I cause them from the root in the name of Jesus. The Bible says Jabez was more honorable. He had potential to be great, but something is wrong. And his mother called his name Jabez because he said, I bear him with sorrow. So what? You see, you don't make permanent decisions from temporary situations. It's true, the mother felt pain. Maybe the boy didn't want to come out. But yeah, he gave her daddy. To very best of us, he gave her daddy. But we can't blame the baby now. But when the mother gave back to the child, he called him Jabez. He said, because I bear him out of sorrow. And you see, when a woman is pregnant, especially when a woman is in great pain, whatever she pronounces, blessing or cause, always stick. So also when a person is about to die, that's why um, Isaac said to Esau, Go and get me the venison, venison that I did, uh, the desire, that I may bless you before I die. Because at that time, at those times, whatever he said is very critical. But you see, this guy Jabez had no nothing to do with the name the mother called him. But he discovered that he, he, he is always at the verge of success. And then there will be at the verge of breakthrough. And then there will be trouble. And then someone will come. And just cause trouble when a, a project is supposed to have been finalized something will just happen maybe the software will just crash and then they will not know what happened and then they say we start all over again and so he sat down i'm sure he must have remembered the god of his father he must have remembered that the god of israel is a god that can that can sort out things and readjust whatever is wrong that's why he said in verse 10 and Jabez is called on the god of israel saying Oh, that you will bless me indeed. You see, that word, one time, it, it hit me. You know, you can say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. But when you are blessed indeed, you don't need to tell people you are blessed. They will see. Indeed. Bless me indeed. That means, Jabez is saying, Lord, I know I'm blessed, but I can't even see it. But let it show in my life. And I'm praying for you today. That based on the proclamation that I've made earlier about the spell casted on you by your mom's sister, based on the fact that I have cast them from the root, and the Bible says the power of life and tongue are in my tongue, and I will decree it and it shall be established unto me. I decree over your destiny right now, whatever, whatever raging of the sea that is moving in your destiny, because it's like I see like a lake, but I see moving around. I see there's tornado in it. I command peace be still. In the name of Jesus, peace be still. You, this word, I command you, peace be still. Hmm. I see, um, you know, you know, I saw it. I see a big one. It's the one that is moving. Vroom, vroom, vroom. If I'm going to use traditional understanding, that is synonymous of marine spirit. Maybe you had marine connection and you have not freely free yourself or you have not been free totally because you don't know what to do. I use the grace of God on my life to set you loose today. And you, spirit of marine, hear my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to let that destiny go free now. I command that in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the stranger will hear the voice of the son. And they shall run out of their hidden places. In the mighty name of Jesus. I never return. My brother, my sister. I want you to now commit yourself to serving the Lord. Because one of you is a lady. The truth is. 
I had experience of marine before. You know, I don't know why I'm going this direction. Okay, now when and my life was going in a particular direction, I don't understand. I'm already anointed. I'm casting out devils. I'm preaching the gospel. I'm not. I'm not living compromising life. I live holy life. But things are not just going the right way. After I got married, every little thing caused problem between me and my wife. Every little thing. And you know the funniest part? Every time we are supposed to celebrate something important, the day before or that week, I'm a jasha and pay no fish. If it is our birthday, my birthday, my baby's birthday, short anniversary, just name it. We are going to fight. And I said, This is not right. I began to pray. I said, No, something is wrong. To cut the long story short. I now remember in fact the Holy Ghost gave me Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you have never known before. So I began to pray. I began to make prayer of inquiry. Then I now felt like going to my mom to go and find out about my life. What happened? And then my mom said that when she gave back to me, my grandma took me from her hand and went to put my feet inside the sea. She dedicated it to her marine without my knowledge. I said, okay, that's why. Because before I got born again, ladies just like me stupidly. People I don't like at all be grafting towards me, those who are older than me. I even remember as a young boy that there's a particular woman that was married to a man, they will live in the same compound, and you'll be making advances at me in my primary school. It's not her, it's the spirit. But when I gave my life to Christ, I sought deliverance. And after then, God began to use me. I remember one time I was praying for one guy in Union Baptist Church, Agege, and I saw the spirit of money. Say, Kilo Cohen, what's your problem? You, you have gone. Leave him, leave, leave, leave him alone. I said, no, this one, he has come to the Lord, he must be free. And of course, God set the guy free. What am I trying to say? The spirit of my name does not have power over the name of Jesus Christ. If he sets me free, if he sets people free through me, you are free today. But all you have to do, this is where I'm going. Because I see a lady, you, 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 you become sad because that mirage, mirage of beauty, that money always give people, that make people to always look at you as if you are something special, that mirage is going to disappear. And when it disappears, you will feel bad. Listen, it doesn't matter. My king, spiritual beauty is what is important. And I pray for you today, that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as you make up your mind to start with the Lord, you begin to see the glory of God radiate over your destiny. Because God will use you. I see someone watching me. God is going to use you for prostitutes, single ladies that have refused to marry. Ladies that they date people, they, they are dropped, they date, they are dropped. I see God using you to deliver them and showing them the way. I pray that in the name of Jesus, all I've said today to the glory of God shall come to pass for good in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, Jabez, call upon the name of the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that that will bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast. Enlargement come with God's blessing. And he said, And that your hand might be with me, and that thou will keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. You know why God grant him? He has a sincere heart. I want you to have a sincere heart towards God. I want you to have a sincere heart towards God. You know why? Because when you have a sincere heart towards God, all things will begin to work for your good. Even what the enemy meant for evil, God will transform it and make it to work for your good. I pray for you today that everyone that is like Jabez, you have honor of God on you, but the, 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 the enemy is choking your honor up. I set you free today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I set you free. Yeah. By the authority of God in the name of Jesus, I set you free today. And before I close, I still want to speak into the life of those who are barren. In Genesis chapter 21. Genesis 21 from verse 9 to verse 10. And verse 6 to verse 7. Genesis 21 from verse 6 to verse 7. That Genesis 21 is actually the testimony of a woman called Sarah. Sarah got married to her husband and they could not have a child for more than 20 years and when finally god visited them and god gave them a promise sarah doubted uh, when a woman has been expecting to be pregnant 
all her life until she stopped ovulating and she stopped menstruating. And then after like 20 years after she stopped menstruating, somebody now came and said, by this time next year, you have a baby. Even to bag me, I mean, I doubt to imagine. But God was not angry with her because by woman ability, it was impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And so by the follow, after like three months after the angels left them, she found out that she started having morning sickness and then her body began to change. Maybe initially when she when the baby began to develop in her womb, they probably thought it must have been vibrant or something. And then they went to go and see their own doctors of those days and they confirmed that she was pregnant. I can imagine Abraham making sure that she doesn't even lift her feet. Why? Because the doctor said at her age, she needs complete rest. And at the end of that year, she has her baby. And this is her testimony. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. And all that hear will laugh with me. Hmm. You are watching me. You have a business idea that you have been working on. And it's not working. And people, are, they, they make you a laughing stock. Listen, listen. This is what God is asking me to tell you. They will come back to laugh with you. This time to the glory of God. Because as I speak to you right now, I see the hand of God turning things around. It's like I see a hand entering into your head and turning things like this. I don't know what it is that the hand is turning, but I know it is the hand of God. And God is asking me to tell you, there shall be turn around. And the turn around will bring glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Sarah said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah will we will, have, we will have given children suck. You know when I was saying this, do you understand what it means? When a woman of 90 years re remove her, 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 her breast and start giving her baby suck. As a man, we don't understand. But I remember that every time my wife gives birth, they will, they, they will ask her to put her, her breast in my child's mouth so that the child starts sucking until the milk starts coming. And I, I have seen a woman that her breast refused to bring milk and I can see the sorrow on her face because she gave birth and the child cannot have milk from her breast. So Sarah became overwhelmed with joy and thanksgiving. She said, who can believe? Who would have told Abraham that Abraham had already, he already had Ishmael, but that's not the child of promise. And God is asking me to tell you, continue it's not finished for you yet. Because with God, nothing shall be impossible. I pray for you today that God we shall make you laugh. I pray that God will make you laugh. In every circumstance of your life, God will make you laugh. Just for your glory to show. Just for your laughter to manifest. Ah. I hear the voice of the Lord said to me, the Lord shall make you laugh. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a particular lady I know. Oh my God. She, she was of age because she was of age, she's, she's just having this disappointment here and there, and then she got married at one time, she couldn't have pregnancy, they drove her out of the marriage, then finally somebody who is a pastor, the church where she was attending, one of their pastors said, okay, I will marry you, she agreed, she was the one that financed this pastor in the pastor school, and the, she was the one that did the graduation for this pastor single-handedly, I am talking about my wife's friend, Auntie Momo, Dad, Danny. ah, and on the day of marriage, I am talking life story, on the day of marriage, we went to the registry. And by the time we got there, we are told that the body did not hold. We showed them the invitation card. They said yes. And we now have to now find a way to see the woman. When the woman was now narrating the story, she said that the family of the man stood up on your wedding. They said, I won't back your man. I won't fail to bring it. Lord, your wedding. All that if you know you, the lady was seven months pregnant already. 
But to cut the long story short, at the end of the day, the pregnancy, there was miscarriage. The lady almost killed herself, but God sustained her. She now got married to a man that loved her. And then she has twins. And after that, twins. And after that, one child. Oron wa pale ni ayo. Ah, oron to barabi ni yekpade. Loru ko jesu abay padi. In that disappointment that has overwhelmed your destiny, heaven will step in. Ah, oh Lord God, I call upon you. You know the story I tell is the real story. You know the testimony I share is what you have done for a woman. Lord, I pray for this man. Ah, ni go go on what time you think you share here? Call you go dash your right here. Eh, let there be a turn around. Let there be testimony. Kio go on go far out. Call you go do you see what I know here? Kio you go share? Bell do they say marry? Jesus Christi. I really appreciate God for this time that I have with you today. I believe God has stepped into your life. I believe something great is about to happen. And you will share the testimony very soon. You see the details of how you can contact me. Let me know what God has done in your life. You see it on the screen. Until I come here again next time. Don't you ever forget. No matter what you have gone through in life. Now that you are a child of God. I know one thing for sure. That your life is wonderful. Because Jesus is real. I will see you next time. You have a glorious day. Bye bye. Watching Amazing Fire TV.